What's up guys, Gary with Salt Top Dev. Today we are gonna go over what I would do if I wanted to become a web developer from scratch in the year 2023. Now we're still in December of 2022, but you have to have a plan for this. You can't just like walk into becoming a developer. You have to have a plan and you have to execute. So today I'm gonna lay out a plan that I would use. So first off, what would make a good course? Well, um, the reason I suggest web development, specifically front-end web development, is because that is the lowest barrier to entry, in my opinion. And then after you get some experience doing that, it's a lot easier to pivot to back-end development or mobile development or any other area you want to go into because you've got that little bit of experience already. But what would make a good front-end development course? Well, first, you've got to show them what they need to learn, right? So like you need to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then a JavaScript framework. Um, you know, you need to learn how APIs work. Uh, there's other stuff, but the course would need to go into what you need to learn. And then it would also need to have an effective way of breaking each one of those down and teaching it to you. So like um, HTML, so basically you just gotta go through all the tags in HTML, what they are, what they do, how to use them, um, then probably CSS, how to use CSS, how to select elements, how to style elements, how to position things on the screen so on and so forth with the other skills. And then the most important thing in my opinion, um, as I've always said in my videos, is building projects on your own. It's great if they hold your hand through building a few projects, but unless you're building projects on your own, you're not actually learning a whole lot. Now with that in mind, these are a few of the sites or learning resources I would probably use to acquire that knowledge and build those projects. So first off, it's Team Treehouse. Um, the tech degree programs they have are what I recommend. They cost 200 bucks a month. Um, if that's too expensive, look in the notes off where you can skip to like the free options or like a cheaper option. Um, but I do think the money, paying money is important because that's gonna keep you, like if 200 bucks is a lot of money for you and you're paying that a month, you have a lot of skin in the game, right? Like you're gonna focus, you're gonna get this done. Uh, when I was doing this, I like 200 bucks was a lot of money for me per month. And I was waking up at five in the morning to study, uh, study till like eight, get ready for work, go to work, come home around, get home. I'd get home around six and then I'd study from like six, seven, eight, nine, and nine, I'd go to bed probably and then do it all over again. And as long as you're focused and doing like working hard, you can get the two that I recommend done in four months and four months. Like you can take four to nine months on this if you're just like messing around but if you're nose to the grindstone focused, you can get this done in four months. Uh, so let's dive into this a little bit. They're get, they get the front end web development tech degree and their full stack JavaScript tech degree. You might not need both of these. You might be able to get a job before you get to the full stack JavaScript tech degree, but this is the path that I went down when I did this and I ended up doing both. Uh, plus I feel like hitting JavaScript again, like JavaScript's so much more deep, so much deeper than HTML and CSS. Um, and you start learning frameworks in this one too, that JavaScript, you need a lot more time on that as well. So let's see, what do they have here? Um, this, they've got eight projects for you, which again, I said the projects, that's the biggest selling point for me in courses. Like, are they giving you projects to build on your own? That's where the real learning takes place. It's like riding a bike. Like you can look, watch YouTube videos on how to ride a bike all day long, but until you actually get on a bike outside, um, you're not gonna know if you can do it or not. You're not really gonna, the theory, has to be applied, you know? So they give you seven projects in this, the photo gallery. I've actually still got that one on my portfolio. Um, I've, let's see, if we go to self.dev.com slash portfolio, I replaced a lot of the projects with some of, I need to revamp, this is trash right now, but I've replaced a lot of the projects with like real world stuff I did, like Tri Digital's homepage, Honey's homepage, uh, this React Mern stack to-do list. But I got their photo gallery on there, their employee directory, uh, this pad, I, I don't, I cannot pronounce that word for some reason. This list, uh, tic-tac-toe game, and then I think this random quote generator might be Team Treehouse. I might have made that on my own, not sure. Um, but those are just a few of the example, like examples of the projects. If you want to go to selfhot-dev.com slash portfolio, I think those projects still have live links, so you can go check them out and play with them a little bit if you want. Um, but you build a personal portfolio page, a mobile first responsive layout, online registration form, style guide, interactive photo gallery, game show app, web dashboard, 
and an API to create an employee directory, or you use the API to create that employee directory. And then Capstone Portfolio, where you build a portfolio and put all those projects together. Um, the portfolio is a very important piece of the puzzle too, because that's kind of where you can point to um, employers to and say like, hey, look, I've built this stuff. I know what I'm doing. It's safe to hire me. It's safe to give me a chance. And that's what, that's another reason I think front end development is a, has a lower barrier to entry because it's a lot easier to display what you've learned. And as long as your projects look pretty good, like they look visually appealing, that helps a lot too. Like they're gonna try to not judge you on your design skills because you're not going to be a designer. Um, but having well-designed projects is gonna help a lot. It's like the first impression, right? Like if you go into an interview wearing a suit, you're gonna make a way better first impression versus somebody going into an interview wearing shorts and a t-shirt. So. Having good looking projects helps a lot in my opinion, but the way these work, basically you go through a bunch of video modules, which is another reason I prefer Team Trios. I just like videos. Um, when you do go through these courses, whether it's this, Free Code Camp, my course, any other course, make sure you treat it like a college course. Like I'd have an actual notebook and take notes while you're doing this. The repetition helps drill this stuff into your head. And plus, when you run into a problem building the project, you can just refer back to your notes and find the answer or Google it. Uh, but that's going to save you time versus just having to go dig back through the section modules and find where the knowledge you need is and having to pull it back out again. So take notes while you're doing these. But yeah, you basically go through video modules, they'll have like quizzes and little exercises for you along the way. And then once you get through the end of it, they'll give you a project like building your personal portfolio page. Um, and then they basically just repeat with new knowledge in each one. Like I assume this one's mostly well, it looks like you learn CSS in here too. So this is probably mostly HTML and then basic CSS. Uh, then you get into responsive CSS. Um, maybe you start learning about HTML form elements here, but this is probably where I'd start. Plus having that $200 a month of leverage because like, you don't you don't want to be paying $200 a month. Nobody wants to pay $200 a month. Um, you can spend that on other stuff. But having that leverage of if I don't, buckle down and work on this. I'm going to end up paying $200 a month longer helps in my opinion. And then if you complete this, I'd start applying for jobs. I'd probably start applying for jobs once I had like three or four or five of these projects done. Uh, the probability of getting a job with only four or five projects done is very low. So I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time applying for jobs. Maybe just send out like five resumes a day. Um, but still might be worth it. Still might get lucky. And then after you complete that, you're still applying, you've got your resume built, you got your portfolio built, um, you want to continue learning, continue building new stuff. So I'd probably go on to the full stack JavaScript course they have, it's going to reinforce the JavaScript knowledge and you're gonna learn JavaScript frameworks in here, I think they go with react, maybe um, looks like we got 10 projects in this one. React, yeah, so they do teach React, Angular, Vue, cool. So Angular and Vue are two other JavaScript frameworks slash libraries, um, but React is the biggest. And depending on where you live or where you wanna live, that's probably what I'd go with. Um, if you're location bound, if you can't change your location, I would get on like LinkedIn's job search or any job search site and search tech jobs in your area and figure out what framework's popular in your area and learn that. If it's not React, I'd probably, I might go somewhere else for the JavaScript in-depth learning because Team Trio teaches React, but it is gonna help a lot if you're location independent. Like if you're willing to move for this first dev job, that's gonna help a lot with getting your first dev job. Uh, I mean, if I had stayed in Shreveport, Bossier, I don't know how long it would have taken me to get a dev job, but I was over in Dallas and it only took eight months. Um, but yeah, that's the next one I'd go with. And then I ended up getting a job before, I think I only got like five or six of the full stack JavaScript projects done before I got a job. So, yeah. And then I think you do get like a little certificate at the end. Um, certificates don't matter. I don't know why people are so um, 
Well, I guess in certain areas, certificates do matter. Like if you're in cybersecurity, certificates matter. But in front-end development, certificates don't really matter. Um, what matters is the projects you build because that's the proof that you know what you're doing. If you have a piece of paper that says, I know HTML and CSS, and be like, all right, cool, so what have you built? Show me what you've built that proves you know HTML and CSS. Um, and that, that's kind of how college is too, right? Like you just get a piece of paper at the end. Hopefully you've built projects in your course or done stuff outside of college to build projects and learn more on your own. But if you graduate college, you just have your piece of paper. Like mm -hmm. I'd probably, if I had to choose between somebody who graduated college and didn't have a portfolio or anything like that, and somebody who taught themselves, I'd probably, depending on how good their portfolio was and how good everything looked, I'd probably pick the person who taught themselves because to me that, that person could be able, like seems a lot hungrier. Like they went out and did this on their own, figured it out on their own. Uh, uh, but if 200 bucks a month is un like not feasible for you, if you can't, get that somehow um second option my course i'm working on html and css course right now look in the description of a way you can sign up to be notified when that comes out should be by the end of this month end of december 2022 um that's gonna be it's gonna have a sale at first um but yeah go check that out it's gonna be a lot cheaper than tree treehouse we're gonna go um, it's video based so because i mean that's like i said that's what i like so i'm gonna go through videos teaching you html what the tags are, what they do, what they're for. Um, we're gonna build some pl projects along the way. Then we're gonna go through CSS, learn how to select elements, style them, position them on the page, build some projects along the way with that. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you a bunch of projects to build on your own, to put on your portfolio, uh, help you sharpen up your resume, and hope, help you get a job with that. So that's another option. Look in the description if you wanna be notified when that comes out, or if it's already out, go sign up for that. Um, but if you want to do this for free and I mean, like you do get what you pay for, right? Like free code camp, the projects on here don't look that great. Um, and then it's like text-based content. So I mean, Hey, maybe you like the text-based content, but this is the first thing you build. Uh, this is kind of just HTML and CSS or HTML on its own. You don't learn any CSS in this first part. Um, but let's start from the base on Free Code Camp. So you sign up for Free Code Camp. You probably want to go to this responsive web design certif or, yeah, certification section first. And then they've got these uh, different courses here for you to build with the project at the end of each one. So we'll go to this first one here. We hit start coding. And then they've got a previewer on the right side here. And then they've got the code over here on the left. So step one, HTML elements have opening tags like H1 and closing tags like that. Uh, we are going to change the text between the tags to cat photo app. So you'd grab that or just highlight that, put it in there and then press check your code and it'll check it and tell you if you got it right or not. And then you can, where's the next button? Is there not the next button? I thought there was a console preview photo app. Oh, submit and go to the next challenge. I'm missing it. Um, but yeah, then you go to the next challenge, um, read, adjust the code like you're supposed to, submit, check it, um, and then hopefully you got it right. If you got it wrong, um, this is kind of an aside, but biggest things to check when your code is not working, spell error, spelling errors, that's the first thing I check. Syntax, um, make sure your code is formatted correctly because that is like those are probably the two biggest mistakes that I see in new devs. Those are probably the two biggest mistakes I made as well. Um, I still make spelling mistakes, unfortunately. Those are annoying. But yeah, so that is Free Code Camp. Um, they've got their different courses and then at the end you build a survey form. So do they have a picture of what we're building in this anywhere? Oh, cool, this looks better than it used to. Um, you build this little survey form. I'd probably add some padding at the bottom here. This is a bit, that's just personal design. But that didn't look too bad, actually. So maybe a better option than I thought it was. Uh, that's one of them you build. You also build this tribute page, which this is kind of meh. It's a page. And then what else do we build in this responsive web design certification? We build a technical documentation page, the product landing page. Hmm. Which that one's kind of painful to look at. But hey, it's projects and you build them on your own, which is the important thing. Um, 
building them on your own. You're gonna have to figure stuff out. Like it's where you, when you go through the videos or the lessons, they're giving you puzzle pieces, right? And when you build the projects, you're like, all right, this piece goes with this piece. This piece connects here. This one goes here. And it helps you formulate the mental models better that you need to learn to build this stuff. Um, and it, I mean, it's just like anything else, like practice, you gotta practice to get good at it. So free code camp is probably their option I'd go with. Um, as the name implies, it's free. Uh, and then after you get the responsive web design certificate or certification done, I do the JavaScript algorithms and data structures the front-end development libraries, and then I'd go to coding interview prep after that. I'll, um, actually, after I got the JavaScript algorithm and data structures certification, I'd probably make my portfolio, make sure it looks good, have my resume. And if you need a resume template, look in the description. I'll have my resume template, the one I used when I was applying to jobs before I had any dev experience, and you can get that for free. Um, but after I get the JavaScript one done, I'd start applying to jobs. Like again, you don't have a framework knowledge, so chances of getting hired are low. It's higher than just the HTML one, but still low. But yeah, then I'd do the front end dev libraries, update your portfolio with any projects you get from that. And then I'd probably go do the coding interview prep. And uh, yeah. So those are probably three choices I'd use. Uh, number one would probably be Team Treehouse. Number two, when my course is out, I'd use that if you can't afford the Team Trials stuff. Actually, I'd use my stuff first, but hey, I'm, I'm biased towards my stuff. So uh, my stuff, then Team Treehouse, and then Free Code Camp, and then what? So you've got the you've got a portfolio, you've got a resume, you're applying to jobs. What do you do after that? Just keep learning, building cooler, bigger, better stuff. Um, maybe start learn some backend, build full, build full stack apps. If you need more direction than that, feel free to come hop in our Discord. Link to that is in the description. You can ask me questions um, or the r slash self taught dev subreddit. It's also another good place to ask questions or if you need any help, feel free to post in either of those places. The Reddit, I do pull questions from and make videos on sometimes if it's a good question, because I don't feel like typing out long par multi-paragraph answers. It's just easier for me to make a video responding to it. But yeah, um, that's probably the ride. Go down, just make sure you keep applying. Don't get discouraged. Um, it's gonna take a while. You're gonna have a lot of rejections. You're gonna have a lot of applications sent out and no responses. Also probably learn, I'd probably Google uh, Ramit Satith, Satith, I can't, I don't know what his last name is. He's got really good interview tips. So if you Google him and interview, uh, he wrote the, what book did he write? I will teach you to be rich, those books back in the 2000, early 2000s. Um, he's got good interview stuff to check out. If you need interview prep tips, make sure you wear nice clothing to your interviews when you go to interviews. Um, I'll probably make another video on interviews, um, some questions on it, stuff like that but that is the basis of the plan that I would follow. Hope this helped you guys out. If it did, give me a thumbs up so YouTube knows I'm doing good stuff. So I know I'm doing good stuff that helps you out. Uh, again, if you'd come hop in the Discord or Self Taught Dev subreddit, links to both of those are in the description. If you wanna be notified when my course comes out, look in the description all the way you can get that as well. And I think that's about it. Hit that subscribe button and I will catch you guys next time. Peace. Round one.